yeah in the security group so security group have gone to so here you are saying create security group and uh, you also found launch secure uh, launch wizard yeah launch wizard yes over there like you can see the sydney sg and default and down i am getting two like launch wizard two of them so i deleted two of them morning and again afternoon i got one more one more like one, one one thing again like launch wizard and i deleted that too now it's clear maybe uh, you know why some more launch wizard okay let me try like this okay okay i got something into my mind I think you have while creating an instance you might have taken a security group created separately and attached with that like this right the security group with launch wizard hyphen one or something like that all right the one which you have deleted uh, I can't see anything so on your screen you can't see my screen Uh, I mean, I can't see the launch wizard. It's normal screen. I can see, but it's normal screen. This is where I'm talking. The highlight one, security. Your cursor was only. No, I can't see the highlight one. Your cursor is stuck in the action place. Okay, okay. So. Now. It's still there, sir. Yeah, now it's okay. Now it's okay, right? So I think yeah. this is what I think you have you have deleted the launch wizard one. Okay, so while creating an instance, you probably have taken a new security group created. I guess. Okay. So that's why it has created a new security groups with the name launch wizard. Okay. Okay, so that's not an issue. Okay. You can have any number of security groups, and that won't be. uh they are not charged by you. okay okay so not okay, to sir. worry but if you feel that you don't want anything you can delete them but please don't try to delete default vpcs okay okay and uh, security groups you can just do but default security group it will not allow you to do you cannot delete default the uh, security groups also but try not an issue okay fine Thank you, sir. so at today's agenda let's start this okay is there any other doubt you wanted to discuss or shall we jump into our today's class come okay. and go to the class sir yes fine let me just check how many have joined into the class for today so is there shilpa vaishnavi rajita is there prashant chandra anu uh hi prashant what about uh, usman Is he having any issue? Uh, no, no. I think he is a problem in uh, power, sir. Okay. There is a problem. So he is having some issues with that. I think problem. Mm -hmm. Past three days he is having that issue. Mm -hmm. Fine, not an issue. You just help him with uh, the topics and ask him to contact. Uh, you know, uh, you know, whenever he just joined to the class, let him clarify all his doubts. <laughs> okay. Now, my question is. Okay, one last question. Let me ask you about the previous classes and then start with our today's class. What for the snapshot? How uh, how can we use the snapshots? What is the purpose of taking snapshots? Backup of our data and also to extend our uh, space in the. That's fine. That was good answer. it is a backup of our data so that we can just you know whenever we lost or there is something wrong happens with the you know current volume we can create any number of volumes with that that's fine and we can also extend whenever we want it the current volume to be extended we can extend that using this any other any other use any other Yes. Can we 
Okay, now you have an instance created in Sydney region. Now since we are currently in Sydney region, so you have created an instance in Sydney region. And uh, there is a volume attached to it, that, uh, to that instance. And there is some data you have entered or uh, copied into that or uploaded. Then all of a sudden, okay, your client who is sitting in uh, US wanted to access that data and within, uh, with less latency. So what you have decided is uh, to create another server and provide this data in US region. So can we do it? Is there any chance that it is possible to, you know, copy all this data of this instance and that particular volume which is attached to that instance in Sydney region to US region? Yes. How is that possible? It's quite simple, right? You take the snapshot of the volume, okay? That volume you copy into the other region, whichever the region you wanted, that snapshot. Then from that snapshot you create a volume, fine, we'll get the volume and the data available. So that is the purpose. You can also, you know, uh, 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 access your data across the regions by taking the snapshot. Someone else is joining? Okay. So now, okay, let's begin like this. For example, I mean, yeah, have you anybody heard anything about crashing the servers that due to, you know, uh, huge requests, the servers have gone crashed? Have you, have you heard anything about that? Especially, you know, e-commerce sites and uh, the government sites, servers. Yeah, like we say the, shed, the server is low, the server is down. Yeah, the server is down, uh, the sites are not reachable. Yeah. Do you so know when you are going to check the results then? Exactly, exactly. So, you know, when you are trying to check the results, everybody, you know, uh, try uh, checking their results at the same time. So they load okay the number of requests hitting to that website increases enormously n number of more than our expectations and automatically you know such a huge load when hits to this website the server on which the website is built will not be able to bear such a huge load and then it will just go crash by itself so that is what happens now what do we do in order to you know uh, come out of that how do we safeguard our environment and how do we you know provide the need to the people how do we serve all those requests hitting to our website how is that possible okay, for example you know you have uh, four servers for your website okay and with those four servers you have decided to serve your website it is built on all the four servers and you're trying to, you know, uh, serve people. But how do, you know, uh, these requests hitting to your website understand that they should go to all these four servers? All right. If it goes to only one particular server, though you have four servers, when all the requests are routing to only one particular server, then there is no sense in it automatically even that server will also go down and there is no sense in having four servers to reach out all the requirements in order to come out of this situation we have a mechanism in our cloud here that's load balancer so what do you mean by load balancer load is what do you, what do you mean by load actually the load is nothing but what the request hitting to your website okay or uh, there is some data and that data is provided a share with and that can be accessed by people 
when many people try accessing that data at a time automatically it happens the same with the server in which the data is sitting it's not only website anything that you are sharing over internet and that is accessed by people when many people access at a time that many people accessing is nothing but so much of load hitting to your server so when load increases more than what it can bear then automatically the server will become unreachable unresponsible unresponsive so in that situation we'll say the site is down or uh, the you know data is not accessible something like that so to overcome that we you know extend our number of servers and uh, to reach out are to distribute all the load okay there should be some mechanism that the load or the number of requests hitting to your website or your data should be distributed to all the servers you have so that is what load balancer does so what do we do we take a load balancer we keep it in the front okay we keep it in the front and behind that load balancer we keep all of our servers attached to that load balancer then what load balancer does whenever requests are hitting to that it will distribute all the requests to all the healthy available servers okay understand this statement what load balancer does load balancer receives all the requests and distributes that load or that request to all the available and healthy instances what do you mean by available and healthy instances available means first how many servers are available in your environment and next thing healthy instances nothing but of course there is a server but that's not reachable when it the server itself is not reachable what is the sense of routing request to that server all right so first with this load balancer always check whether your server is healthy or not that is reaching or not reachable or not it is responsive or not after once it confirm by itself that the server is alive and then it is reachable it's responsive then it confirm by itself the load balancer confirm by itself okay yeah this server is available to serve the request then it will send so how does it check how does the, uh, the load balancer check whether the server is healthy or not okay all these concepts are seen in today's class how do we create a load balancer and how smart it is what way it works what way it distribute the load and all and all will be checked today okay are you ready for that so what do i do initially i'm not creating any instances we'll do that later first i'll go create a load balancer it's still possible for us to do that without instances also we can do that later on so i'm going into the load balancer okay um then in this load balancer i'm currently not having anything because i do not keep anything i don't want to pay anything so i'm just going to create a load balancer first of all tell me are you clear with what load balancer is everybody yes. are you want me to clarify with an idea any other examples hope everybody is clear with what it is okay fine thank you so i'm just going to create a load balancer now i clicked on create load balancer like how we have understood every single parameter in creating or launching an ec2 instance we have to understand all these parameters here in this so first one define load balancer we have to give a name to it okay now what i'll say uh, my web something load balancer some name i've given randomly okay fine so load balancer let's understand um 
what example okay okay so you have a website that website may be an e-commerce site you are trying to sell uh, something maybe you have a business that business uh, you know uh, not only having a particular office but you also have an online store for that so that online store needs a website all right so that website when you have created maybe very new people doesn't know much about it but later on it has become the website has become very famous okay initially when no one knows or when it is known to so only a limited amount of people you have created that website with one server for example let's understand this way okay later on when it become famous your website become famous it has become you know slow to access by people very slow people when trying to access it's not reachable that easily or it is the people are not able to access your website uh, so simply like how it was initially why it's because the number of people accessing your website has increased the number of people accessing your website increases automatically due to the uh, huge amount of requests the server will become your website's server will become unresponsive because it may not be able to bear so much of huge load what if you know you are able to uh, read one textbook today uh, in a day and if i just provide you some three to four textbooks at a, uh, at a time and then ask you to complete reading all of them in a particular day. Will you be able to cover it up? That may not be possible, right? That may not be possible to cover three to four when your capacity is reading only one book in a day. So similarly, when whenever you create a website, that site needs a server and that, si that server will have certain capacity or certain limit to, you know, serve. When number of requests increases more than that limit, then automatically it will slow down or sometimes it may go, you know, totally or uh, permanently shut down. So in order to overcome, we increase the number of servers. But what if even after we increase the number of servers, okay, you had only one server initially and after noticing that your website has become very popular, and you have bought another two new servers to serve your purpose <laughs> now you have three servers but all the way these requests are hitting to only one particular server and the other two servers are being idle so in that situation what is the purpose of having three servers and there is no solution to you know your uh, issue with number of servers just increase like that so we wanted a, some some sort of mechanism which distribute all the requests fitting to your website to all the available you know uh, servers in your environment so that's what is done by load balancer so load balancer balances all the load balancing in what way it will distribute for example you have three servers and uh, uh, six requests have come for example five requests have come okay you have three servers and five requests have come to your website then what happens is first load balancer check whether all the three servers are healthy or not once if it gets the response that they are that all the three servers are healthy then whatever the request five requests have come out of five first request will be sent to first server second request to the second third request to the third server it distributes in a round robin way to all the healthy servers and next fourth request is to the first server <laughs> then fifth is to second server then <coughs> since there are only five server uh, uh, five requests this is how it is distributed so one after the other in a round robin way the distribution is done so in order to define what is load balancing is you understand load balancer distribute all the load or requests hitting to your server will be distributed okay equally to all the healthy 
and available servers in your organization okay all the healthy and available servers the distribution of load or request hitting to your website or anything the distribution of that equally to all the available and healthy instances that's what load balancer so today we are going to see how that load balancer function I mean what way it is created what way it is just you know created whenever you create a load balancer always it is placed in front okay after that okay when load balancer is placed in front of that uh, in front and all the servers are placed behind the load balancer and connected to the load balancer attached all the servers are attached to the load balancer so when you are requesting something from these servers it will not go to the servers directly but it will go to load balancer and from there the load balancer will send it traffic or allocate a server or route this request to a particular uh, freely available server so how does it check whether it is healthy or not how it distribute the load what way the load balancer is created and placed in front of the servers all that we are going to check so for that what we have to do we need to log into a management console AWS management console after once that is done okay you have to go down and you'll find load balancer after once you found load balancer you have to click on create load balancer then you'll find the screen which is available now which is which is seen for you guys okay um, does that make sense Shilpa yes hope you could understand yeah fine thank you so now what I'm doing for in, in the first tab define load balancer we have to give a name to that and select um, a VPC so since we have separate VPC created I'm going with the default VPC available and I've given a load balancer name my load balancer name as my web load balancer just like that then create an internal load balancer yeah I need to tell you this the load balancers of two type internal load balancer and external load balancer what do you mean by internal and what do you mean by external let's try to understand you have an organization working for and in that organization you know uh, there is a server in which so much of data is you know uploaded and that data is to be accessed by your organization employers only not to the external world so you have provided a share to all such documents or files or whatever it is so how does people will be able to access so you can have a load balancer even for that server also and all the employees access some data all at a time all right it's nothing but you know you have a finance data and that server the finance data is in a particular server uh, maybe in the beginning of your month you have issued all the employees salary statements so when everybody is trying to access their salary statements which are placed in one particular server that salary statements may you know uh, find some you know the server may find difficulty to serve all such employees request when they are hitting at a time similarly <coughs> when HR people okay uh, provide you some link and uh, uh, you know for some survey and ask you to kind of you know uh, participate in that survey and you all have uh, one sec one sec dear um, yeah sorry for the disturbance so that needs to be accessed even in that situation you know you have to provide a share by keeping that survey documents in one particular you know server so anything internally you know within the organization when something needs to be shared okay and that uh, if you find that it needs to have a load balancer then you keep a load balancer in between in front of all such servers which are needs to be accessed which are uh, you know about to access by all your employees so that is internally within the organization when you wanted to have a load balancer 
and then what do you mean by external load balancer external load balancer is nothing but apart from internet uh, internal access you have a website and that website is open to everybody entire public like yahoo.com flipkart.com or amazon.com something like that all right a google.com which is open to everybody entire world in that case external load balancer is to be created so when something is open to world and made to access that by the entire world then in that situation we go with external load balancer and by default when you create a load balancer it will be an external load balancer unless you just click on this okay unless you click on this box you select you check this box it will be an external load balancer only all right so now i'm creating an external load balancer because i'll go create a server and install apache server into that okay in that instance then create a web page that web page i'll try to access by my load balancer okay so for that you know the web page is accessed over internet and for that we need to have an external load balancer so i'm not creating an internal one i'm going with an external enable advanced vpc configuration i'm not going for the, with that let's keep uh, things as simple as that and one more thing the real-time issue you must have to take port number 80 that's HTTP because this is an external load balancer and where people try to access via internet and when they try to access via internet they should be allowed to access our website or our data and that's possibly done by port number 80 so port number 80 should be enabled so the load balancer protocol port number 80 should be enabled and by default it's enabled and if you wanted any more protocols to be attached or given access with then you can just go and add here with this button are we clear with this tab shall we move on to the next one yes, sir. yes? fine so what we yes. have done in this tab we have given a name we have done nothing but we have given a name the options if you have any VPC created your personal VPC you can go select that VPC and there are two type of load balances that's internal one and external one if you wanted an internal load balancer to be created you just need to check this box if not let it be let's let it be as simple as that and then you can just go with advanced VPC configurations that's for an additional layer of security uh, but I'm not going with that <coughs> You may say, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. <clears throat> so that's which enables advanced VPC configuration and then listener configuration is this the load balancer protocol who needs to listen and how it needs to listen that load balancer listen all that so it listens via port number 80 and grant permissions to access your data because people request over internet especially when it is an external load balancer so I'm moving on to the next tab that's assign security group remember you can have multiple security groups attached to it I'll tell you one real-time scenario here in this case okay in real-time scenarios remember we will never provide the permission or inbound traffic to everybody okay for example if you take Sydney security group this is what we have created if you just take okay I hope you remember I have taken two inbound rules one is HTTP port number 80 and the other one SSH port number 22 but but for both of these port numbers okay I have given I have selected source as anywhere so that anybody can access 
but in real time in our organizations we will never provide access to everybody unless it's a public site okay unless it is a public site where public everybody can access we do not provide it we take some custom IP addresses and in that custom IP addresses we list out who and all can access this data okay so in that custom IP what happens there is a new user uh, appointed in your organization or a new laptop is provided to some employee and his IP address has changed the range of IP address has changed for example and he's not able to access this data so what do you do it is possibly done by going and editing the security group attached to this rather you attach you can also you know you, you edit a security group which is existing you can also go attach another security group to that with the uh, new persons or uh, the person's new laptop whichever the new IP address it is having provided access to that so that is why you can have multiple security groups attached to that so you can select both or select only one I'm just going with only one that is one security group okay or if you wanted to create another one you can also do that but I'm not doing that I'm just going with another uh, existing default security group so going to the next one this is one way of you know uh, having a security to your environment and if you wanted another additional layer of security okay you can just go to this configure security settings for that you need to have okay SSL certificates so load balancer is not using any secure listeners the your traffic to the load balancer needs to be secure use either HTTPS or SSL protocol so SSL certificates you you probably needed if you have SSL certificates you attach here if not let it be not an issue we do not needed that compulsorily this is just an additional layer of security that's all then go back to the next tab sorry sorry go to the next tab and this is what we probably have to understand clearly okay it is kind of configuration stuff so how do we configure the first one is HTTP the ping protocol how will it bring uh, ping to the server which means I have told you people that the load balancer always check whether the server is healthy or not whether the instance is healthy or not how does it check whether the instance is healthy or not all right so to check that okay to check whether the instance is healthy or not this is where we fix that so port number 80 is the you know permission provided to that over that port number 80 it always ping a particular file okay a particular web page created separately uh, that web page it will keep on pinging which is onto a particular server when it get a proper response from that server okay then it will consider okay this server is healthy and it is reachable if it do not get any response from that particular web page created then it consider that the server is not healthy and it will keep on hold and stop sending to uh, stop sending request to that instance so so this is what and the ping path what is the ping path the web page okay the web page created on a particular instance which is always ping to check whether the server is healthy or not and here what I'm doing is I'm not giving index.html because when somebody is trying to access a website if not if not they specify any specific page they try to access it will by default take them to index page so the D index page is a default page when somebody is trying to access a website so I don't want it to give the default web page but I would like to give a separate web, uh, web page which is accessed by only this load balancer to check whether the server is healthy or not whether the instance is healthy or not rather I provide a default so what is that uh, web page I wanted to create it I wanted to create it a web page with this name healthcheck.html
healthcheck.html is the web page I would like to create. I will create of course when once we launch an instance. So after once that is done, you know, it will keep on pinging to this web page. When this web page responses to the, you know, uh, load balancer, then it will consider, okay, this instance is healthy. But how does it ping? Okay, this is, these are the timings provided. You wanted to know what these are, you just place your cursor over this eye, you'll understand. So the response timeout, the time to wait when receiving a response from the health check. So first it will send a ping. It will send a request to that healthcheck.html web page. And how long it needs to wait to get the response from that web page? Sometimes, you know, it may be busy in uh, serving another request. So how long it needs to wait? The time provided to that will be 2 seconds to 60 seconds. So it can wait in this period of time. So by default, we have provided 5 seconds of time. So it will wait for 5 seconds when once the ping request is sent to that. Within 5 seconds, if it receives any response from that web page health, healthcheck.html, then it's fine. It validate that request. If not, it will, you know, consider failed. The ping response is failed and then it will consider that instance as a default instance. Faulty one. And interval. So what is this interval? Interval is nothing but the time interval between every two consecutive ping responses, pings. So once, for example, um, the very first minute, okay, very first minute of the first hour or any hour, very first minute, uh, the load balancer has sent a ping response, ping requested to particular instance. Okay, I waited for five seconds and it has received its, its response. Okay, but you know, sending a ping response to an instance for one time is not enough. Probably it's not enough. It needs to check continuously. So, right. So, the next ping response, with what time interval it needs to send the next ping response. That's what is defined here. It is. It needs to send another next ping response to the server or to the instance after 30 seconds. So 30 seconds will be a little higher for, for us. What I'll do, I'll just make it 10 seconds. So it will wait at 10 seconds of time and after 10 seconds it will send another ping request to that instance back. Wait for 5 seconds, get the response, come back and then after 10 seconds it will send another ping response. So it will keep on Ping, pinging that instance after every 10 seconds with a, uh, you know, a response time of 5 seconds. You clear with that? Then the next one, unhealthy threshold and healthy threshold. Any doubt? Anybody? You understood? No, sir. Yeah. Everybody understood what's response time out and what's time interval? Yes. Okay. The next one is unhealthy threshold. What's unhealthy threshold and healthy threshold? Which means, you know, which means the unhealthy threshold is mentioned to be two times and healthy threshold is mentioned to be ten times. I'll change this to three times. So number of times are number of responses it needs to wait for treating a server or an instance to be healthy or to be unhealthy. Okay. If it gets, for example, unhealthy threshold is mentioned too. <coughs> so what it does, every 10 seconds, it will respond, it will send a request. So for example, for the first 10 second, first second, it has sent a request to <coughs> instance 1 it has got the response after 10 seconds okay it has sent another request then the second request did not get any proper response from the instance it has waited for 5 seconds but still no no luck then you know uh, it has 
uh, you know considered okay this response is failed after another 10 seconds okay it has sent another ping response and this time also it did not get any response so for how many consecutive times it did not get the proper response from server first is first time it got the response but for the next two times it did not get any response so what we have mentioned here number two we have mentioned which means <coughs> if the server do not respond continuously for two times with a time frame of 10 seconds waiting for five seconds every time it requests a ping request it sends a ping request okay it needs to consider the load balancer consider that the server is unhealthy that's what unhealthy threshold the number of times you mention number of requests it wait for to validate this server is healthy or not since it is mentioned two it will only check two consecutive requests ping responses if it finds any two consecutive ping responses are not properly received okay not responded to the ping response any instance then that instance is treated to be unhealthy so no requests will be sent to that <coughs> then what about okay it doesn't mean when the instance is treated unhealthy it doesn't mean that the instance is that the server is useless that may be a number of there may be a number of reasons there may be you know uh, some a number of requests sent to that server and due to those n number of requests the server may be busy so it could not respond with this thing uh, you know healthy health dot health check dot html so that may be a reason <coughs> or due to huge load you know it might not respond so temporarily it is treated to be unhealthy but not permanently then after some time the server come back to the normal situation when it come back to the normal situation it should be reused again so how do we able to reuse it again it's not isn't it we should not simply you know ignore a server just like that when number of requests increases more and more and we keep you know considering our instances unhealthy like this then end of the day it's of no sense having this load balance so how does this unhealthy you know uh, server made to be a healthy and then able to serve all the requests that's possibly done by healthy threshold so two times it has checked and did not get response so far after two consecutive times it will consider as unhealthy but it will not stop pinging to that server okay the moment of course it will consider that the server or the instance is not healthy but the load balancer does not stop pinging that server though it's healthy or unhealthy and after once it is treated to be <coughs> unhealthy later on if it get since i have taken three number three here if it get continuously three times a proper response from the server <coughs> okay proper response from the server for three consecutive times then that instance will be treated again as a healthy instance and the load balancer start sending the or uh, distributing the load to that instance as well so this is how the load balancer is really very smart enough to check with which server is healthy and which server is not healthy whether to send the load to that server or not okay when server is too busy in you know uh, serving all the requests allocated to that even after that if it keep on you know assigning uh, if it keep on sending request to that then automatically it will fail to reach or serve all such huge amount of requests so for that it will give a break to that instance which has huge amount of load allocated so this is how it works out 
unhealthy threshold considered that instance is not healthy and then healthy threshold reconsider that instance is being healthy and then now can send or route all the traffic to that or distribute load to that are you clear with all these points yes sir yes so let's move on to the next step add ec2 instances this is where you need to add instances and of course it can be you know um, you can also do that for uh, later on because i do not have any you know instances currently running now if you have instances currently running all those running instances are listed here so you have to pick what instances are to be you know uh, uh, attached to this load balancer so there are no instances available when you come down enable cross zone load balancing so see smart enough this is really smart enough that you have created a instance in one particular maybe 2a zone or 2b zone or 2c zone it's not only that you can have your servers built on multiple locations or multiple availability zones and still you can have your you know a website reach out all of them it's nothing but you know if there is some disaster happen in any particular availability zone your entire infrastructure go down in that situation you know you create servers in all the multiple availability zone which means all the available data centers and uh, you wanted to serve people in that situation you know you create a load balancer and to that load balancer enabling cross zone load balancing you attach all the different zones different availability zones instances to this load balancer <coughs> clear with that and connection enable connection draining it is for three th 300 seconds which means five minutes the number of seconds to allow existing traffic to continue flowing all right though it is healthy you cannot continuously send traffic to a particular instance right it needs to send only for 300 and say 300 seconds after 300 seconds it will give a break to that particular instance so that it can get relief from all the load sent to it are reach out all the you know, re, you know serve all the requests and come back to normal so then after 300 seconds it will be uh, distributed it will get distributed all the load back to it so that's what enable connection draining so both of them are by default be checked so it's fine fantastic <coughs> So that's what we are going to check now. We will be checking, we will be testing that. The next thing is add tags. What do you know? What do you give the tags? You can just give multiple uh, random tags here. For example, um, your ID you wanted to give. ID would be some something, some numbers I'm randomly providing. And create what is that? The next one, name of it. <coughs> or or uh, purpose you know the team which team holds this load balancer maybe you know uh, application team something like the random them giving something and all so you can just have multiple tags to a particular you know uh, load balancer then go to the next one that's lastly a review and create <clears throat> so you can check one last time what and all the configurations you have given parameters you set once you confirm everything is fine there's nothing to be edited again <coughs> you go create the load balancer are you clear with this creating load balancer everybody is there any doubt Say yes or no, please. Yeah, it's everything is clear. Fine, fine, clear, I'm so, clear. Yeah. So, is this load, load balancer charges like it's free? It will charge. Okay, it will charge. <coughs> okay, it will charge. Yeah. So. Because it distributes the load to all the multiple uh, servers available, right? Yeah. It is a mechanism or it is a server, sorry, service 
we are utilizing so even for this service there is a little uh, minimum amount of you know uh, charges provided fine only few people are responding I wanted everybody to be active in the sessions please so fine our load balancer is this okay um, let's try to understand all its tabs the, the first one is description the same description is also seen here horizontally and vertically when you wanted to see you come down in that description you'll have the DNS name so this is what you know the uh, DNS name provided to the load balancer so remember every load balancer will have a DNS link name a DNS link allocated to that by default lead. and nowhere you provide an IP address to that a thing like that the running instances are by default listed and from that list of running instances you have to pick which how many number of instances you wanted to attach to this so nowhere we have come across of public IP address or private IP address so how do uh, you know uh, this load balancer be able to communicate with that so that's possibly done by you know that instance ID and all which we have attached to that the load balancer so to access that website or data what do we do we have to go to this link my web that's nothing but the load balancer name the ID okay, the ID provided then um, the region in which your load balancer is created then Amazon AWS dot com and this is totally called as a record alias record a stands for alias record of course okay this DNS name the default DS name which is provided um, when a load balancer is created obviously it's not user friendly because people find difficulty to remember this number the you know a number so what do we do if you wanted to reach your site just like that you have to register a domain and that domain will be allocated or attached with this so then when people you know try you know access in that so for example uh, results is there okay if you wanted to announce results online for that you have a domain name registered online results.com for example something like that so you have to <coughs> make sure that when people type online results.com it should directly you know route that traffic to this load balancer and from this load balancer it should send it to all the servers you have attached to this so you have to you know go register that domain name and that domain name is allocated or assigned with this domain name then it will reach the purpose because this set of IP addresses associated with the load balancer can change over time you should never create an A record with a specific IP address that's why we have never given any IP address because sometimes when server is not reachable where you have to stop it and start its IP address change so nowhere we talk about IP addresses of instances allocated to or attached to the load balancer <coughs> okay and when you wanted a friendly DNS name then we have to go okay if you want to use a friendly DNS name for your load balancer instead of the name generated by elastic load balancing service you should create a C name <laughs> So A record stands for alias record and C name stands for canonical name. Alias record and canonical name. Understand this way. The difference is in between alias record and, and canonical name. Alias record is a DNS name which is defaultly provided to a load balancer. <coughs> okay, that's not user friendly. So we go register a proper domain name that registered domain name which we are going to allocate or assign to the 
load balancer DNS name is known as canonical name. <coughs> So that's what the difference between alias name and uh, canonical name. You clear with that? <coughs> <coughs> I'm sorry. <coughs> ah, excuse me for that. Yeah, I'll explain. I do that. <coughs> Give me a second time. So, don't worry, we will also discuss about A record and C name again in root 53 but for now understand C name is nothing but canonical name canonical name okay there are two uses with this canonical name over alias record so first understand what is alias record alias record a record is a default DNS name provided when an ELB is created okay the default DNS name which is not user-friendly clear since it's not user-friendly when you wanted something very easy for people to reach out your site for that we probably need a domain name created for example you know you wanted to search something in the internet so what do you do by default you go type google.com and then search whatever you wanted in that because everybody knows a google is a search engine a good search engine where most of the people use it but do you ever think that google search engine also have a server behind it and that server will have um, a, an IP address okay <coughs> when people are provided with IP addresses whenever you stop and start the instance for your maintenance purpose its IP address change right the public IP address by default change and you cannot have a number of elastic IPs so that you create and allocate to that there is a limit of a number of uh, you know uh, IP addresses that a region for an account you have only five elastic IPs created so how is that possible you wanted a DNS name and of course that google.com also have so many servers and so many servers are kept behind a particular load balancer so that load balancer will also have a, a, an A record and that A record is provided to you who will you know keep typing or remembering such a huge lengthy a DNS name all right so to overcome that you know we have C name option canonical name option that canonical name is nothing but you simply register a domain name with some sites just like godaddy.com or something something like that we will discuss all this stuff again in root 53 don't worry uh, it will be just like a reminder for you then okay so that C name is created and assigned to this just like google.com I said. So that google.com domain name is allocated or assigned with this default DNS name that is nothing but a record. Then whenever people you know search something by going into google.com site the moment they say google.com enter it will defaultly come to the requests are sent to this ELB over this A record and from this A record it will go 
provoke all the servers or distribute the data or load to all the servers available. <coughs> so that's what C name and A record. I hope that makes sense for you. All right. And this load balancers are only cross availability zonal. Within the available within the region, you have n number of availability zones and your environment is created in those n number of availability zones when it needs to reach. But when it needs to have across the regions, your website is built and needs to serve across the regions. So how do you, you know, um, allocate this load balance to work with across the region? So we don't have that option of, you know, creating a load balancer to send traffic to all the, you know, uh, servers across the regions. We have across the availability zones, but across the regions we do not have. So how is that possible? You know, you select the other region, create number of servers over there of similar, you know, um, softwares. That's possibly done by creating an AM and copying it to that respective location. From there you create instances with the respective AMI. Okay. And uh, these multiple, multiple zonal, not multiple, sorry, multiple regions, these multiple regions, load balancers, when needed to be, you know, reached simultaneously because both these multiple regions, load balancers have got similar sort of servers which have our website built on them. So how do they access when the environment is set up in cross regions, which means that's possible by, you know, C name, canonical name. How is that possible? In this C name, whatever the do domain name you, you know, register, that regi registered domain name can be allocated to multiple, you know, multiple availability zones and multiple regions. That is the use of C name. Are you clear with that C name? Canonical name? Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay, fine. The next internet facing, that is nothing but external world to the world. In not it's it's not internal. External it is. Then all the details, whatever we have provided are seen. Those are availability zones, cross zone, load balancing we have enabled, you want it to disable, you can disable it here. So like that, all the configurational stuff is mentioned over there. The next instances, this is where you can add your instances later on. So we still don't have any running instances, we ourselves have to create and attach to them. Then health check. This is what we have seen, how it needs to, you know, send traffic to that responding. Monitoring every single service will have a default monitoring for five minutes. And if you wanted a detailed monitoring, you have to select here so that the default monitoring is available and you can have the data set by monitoring all the environment, how healthy your servers and all. So what and all it monitors? the nine parameters it monitors basically the next security what security groups you are attached to that business then tax so these are the tax we have you know uh, provided to our load balancer so that is what all about load balancer. Are you clear with creating a load balancer? And how do we access that? You clear? If you are clear, then we will be testing this load balancer. Okay. Guys, uh, for today, I would like to take a break with this. 
I have a call to be attended or addressed in a short time. So if you are okay for today, we'll stop a session with this how to create a load balancer and tomorrow I'll probably show you initially first we'll see how load balancer work by creating instances and if you are interested you can do this create instances multiple instances in all the availability zones after creating available instances in all the availability zones I'll show you this tomorrow anyhow not to worry um, I'm sorry for uh, stopping the class all of a sudden. Uh, so install Apache server into that. Create two web pages. One is healthcheck.html which we have pro provided through which a load balancer can ping each and every time and then confirm whether that server is healthy or not. And another index page, uh, index.html page, that is how you can access over internet but all these pages web pages are to be created with in the root directory of the Apache server that's via www.html and then see, uh, see how you are able to access these files you clear with that yeah Hope there is no doubt. Is there any doubt? Is there anything you wanted to clarify? Yes? Uh, on this nothing sir. Okay done. Thank you. And yeah we do have class tomorrow. Only Sundays in India we will not have a class. And Saturday is an optional. Uh, tomorrow we'll have a class because I'm just uh, leaving a uh, little early okay. yeah but see uh, check like uh, if you are interested check how it works load balancer works with the information I have provided if not just try creating a load balancer and stop yeah I'll certainly do that I'm sorry I did not share the video yesterday but today I'll surely try uh, sharing the video if not uh, my internet connection works out. I'll just try to do upload these files, these videos using my mobile network only. Okay, so Sir, uh, can we create VPCs? We will do that. Yes, we will do that. When you wanted to frame an entire organization in this public cloud, how do you isolate your own organization? Because many, everybody can log in. Everybody who have created an account can create a number of organizations into that for different projects. Uh, organizations in the sense a number of infrastructures or data centers. So there should be some security that no one should access our organization or our infrastructure. So for that we have to build the VPC. That is how we isolate our resources. And we will see that creating uh, a VPC we will see definitely we will see under networking part okay <clears throat> we are in EC2 once EC2 is done EC2 probably uh, by Monday I'll try to finish up tomorrow we are meeting and after tomorrow Sunday we do not meet Monday uh, tomorrow we may start auto scaling or may not because there are few things I need to discuss before I start auto scaling so Monday we'll try to finish auto scaling and I hope probably we we'll finish our uh, EC2 by Monday then go to storage then go back to our database then when you finish database also then we have VPC here so this is where you go create your VPC so generally like in real time once we launch in the server what kind of work we do in the server sir what kind of work I mean what kind of work we do in the servers See, once we launch the server a, being a cloud engineer you need not to know what you have to do with this server people come to you and ask for creating a number of servers for their need based on the requirement they have 
so depending on that requirement taking that requirement you will just create servers and provide the provide it to them okay so our job is just to create servers that's it yeah of course if you have linux idea that is what i'm saying at least the basic idea of linux if you have fine if not the last session i'll discuss something about uh what is that i'm talking Linux. Yeah, so instances and all. Okay. So we will certainly see that how do we connect and for that we need to know how we have to handle these servers. If it is a Windows server, we need to know what is win how we operate Windows. If it is a Linux OS, we need to know Linux to play with those servers. Okay. Okay. So we will check that, not to worry. And every single thing, whatever I'm doing, I'll explain. If you have any doubt, you can ask me anytime and then clarify your things. And about A record and C name, we will discuss again in this topic, root 53, because this is domain naming service. So how do we associate the DNS name of the uh, alias record with a C name? Okay, the registered domain name that's done here in root 53 topic. Okay. So for now, I'm going to stop a session. So I will delete this load balancer. Now I'm done. I'll recreate it tomorrow. That doesn't take so much of time because today we had to understand all those things. So taking time, but not. Fine. Are you clear with these things, dear? If yes, I'll stop for today's uh, session. Meet you uh, tomorrow. If it is possible, okay, if it is possible, can you please join uh, our tomorrow's class probably by 6.37 o'clock IST in the morning? Is that possible to you? Yeah. Yeah, Everybody, no problem, sir, but, uh, yeah, um, probably by yeah, you know, family uh, problem. Yeah. yeah, already two of them are left. Okay, who's left? Uh, already two of the people left, so we should ask them to. Okay, however, we have uh, a WhatsApp. No, and right? Shiba has left. Okay, okay, however, we have a WhatsApp group, right? So yeah. I'll, I'll communicate in that. So let's drop all your inputs. Based on that, we'll uh, meet tomorrow, okay. whatever the time it is possible. Because, you know, my shift is ending uh, at 6.30 IST. And I'm waiting for about an hour for you guys. In that one hour time, I am sometime, you know, taking some time, a little nap that's making me to log in a little late. So rather I wait for you guys, uh, wait for about an hour in between. Tomorrow, if it is possible, we'll try to meet little early and then check. I have taken one hour of uh, break in between. If in case if there is any issue I need to address, then it may prolong. That's why I have taken an hour up break in between. But I don't think there will be an issue tomorrow. So that is what I addressed. I'll be in touch with you guys. If there is no issue, however, I'll communicate in the WhatsApp. So if there is no issue, we'll meet up by 6.30 in the morning, IST times. Okay? Okay. Fine, then catch you tomorrow. See you. Sir, one more thing, like, this is, is this a middle level? Oh, come on, uh, what is that? Come again, please. Uh, middle level. Your voice is breaking, sorry. Uh, I don't know why. Okay, is Amazon Web Service is a middle level programming? Middle level programming you're talking about? Yeah. See, this uh, is not... Like, is the Amazon Web Service a tool or what? It's not tool, it's not tool, it is a service, okay, it is not a tool, a, tools, a tool is always installed, alright, Linux is a tool, okay. you have to install, okay. and all the applications which we install in our computer are tools, but this is, nowhere we have installed anything, we have created an account, and we are utilizing it. So it is a service rather a tool. Okay. Clear? 
it's a cloud service especially yeah. to be precise okay fine then okay, okay then see you